Welcome to Huawei R&D Center here in Xi'an, one of three locations where we've deployed our campus optics solution, and thousands of my colleagues are currently benefiting from its capabilities. Let's go take a look around and see what's going on. We're here in front of the V5 office building where about 2,000 R&D staff work. We've deployed our campus optics solution here and to compare and observe the tangible benefits of this solution, we've also deployed a traditional Ethernet switch solution. Okay, let's go take a look around and see how these two networks work. These are the structural diagrams of the two networks. The Ethernet solution consists of an equipment room, backbone, management, horizontal cabling and work area subsystems. The main devices are core switches, the aggregation switch and access switches. The core switches are connected to aggregation and access switches using optical fibers. The access switches are connected to terminals using 50 to 80 meter long ethernet cables. Similarly, the campus optics network solution consists of an equipment room, backbone optical cable, distribution subsystem, access optical cable and work area subsystems. Its main devices are core switches, OLTs, optical splitters and ONUs. Optical fiber connects the core switch to ONUs, and Ethernet cables are only used to connect ONUs to terminals. There are two key differences between the two solutions. First, the campus optic solution uses passive optical splitters instead of the active access switches and aggregation switch using the traditional solution. Second, in the campus optic solution, optical fibers move downward to the ONU level, and network cable length is shortened from dozens of meters to just a few. This feature is called optical in, copper out. We've come to the Ethernet equipment room. This is one of four in the building, and it's capable of supporting 500 employees as they go about their day. And there's a lot of equipment here. I can count seven cabinets housed in this fairly sizable room. The switches in these cabinets are active. They need plenty of power and generate quite a bit of heat. And that means that we need to keep the air conditioner running all day long, which is quite an expense. To hold this massive bundle of network cables, we need to have a large cable tray. And remember, this mess of network cables can only support 500 people working. These cables are distributed from access switches to the information points on desks. Now, we've seen the ethernet equipment room. Let's head up one floor to the campus optics equipment room. We've come to the fifth floor of the building where the campus optics equipment room is. There are only two cabinets here compared to seven in the Ethernet equipment room. And these two cabinets are capable of supporting 2,000 employees. So that's two cabinets for 2,000 employees versus seven cabinets for 500 employees. And here we have the OLT cabinet on the right and the ODF cabinet on the left. If we open the OLT cabinet here, we can see that only about half of the space of the cabinet is used. So at the top we have the UPS and then we have the OLT here and they're used to help ensure Type B dual homing protection. Now if we open the ODF cabinet here, we can see at the top we have the ODF, and then the rest of the cabinet consists of the 2 to 16 rack mounted optical splitters. The optical fibers are inside this cable tray. They come from the optical splitters here, and then they're transferred through the cable tray to information boxes at office desks. There aren't very many of these optical fibers, and since they're also quite thin and light, we only need this small cable tray. There's only one more thing to add here, and that's that our air conditioner is switched off right now. We don't need to run it 24-7 because there are only two devices that produce any significant heat, and those are the two OLTs. The ODF cabinet is purely passive, it doesn't generate any heat at all, and it cools down naturally, which saves us a lot in electricity fees. Okay, let's have a wander over to the office area. Optical fibers from the optical splitter are transported to each desk via this underground cabling duct and you can see those optical fibers in this glass cabinet. Now if we look inside we can see two different colors of cables. We have the grey ethernet cables and we have these white cables bound with the green tape which are the optical fiber cables. We also have another kind of white cable here which are telephone lines. Now in this example where we're supporting the same 250 office desk, the difference is clear. There's a much larger bundle of the grey ethernet cables versus a much smaller bundle of the white optical fiber cables. The information box installed under the desk is where the Optics Star ONU is stored. 
It's small, but it can carry several services. Cloud desktop, IP phone, wireless access point, video surveillance camera, printer, video conferencing system, and access authorization. Let's look at some numbers. For the same number of users, 2,000 network cables are used in the switch solution. The width of the cable tray is 40 centimeters. In the campus optic solution, there are 500 optical fibers, and the width of the cable tray is just 10 centimeters. Over 30 cubic meters of equipment room space is needed for the Ethernet solution, but the campus optic solution needs less than 1.5 cubic meters. The Ethernet solution takes twice as long to deliver as the campus optics project. Campus optics requires just a third of the engineering investment, half of the monetary investment, and energy consumption is also a third. Okay, thank you for joining me on this tour. That's all for now, but if you want to learn more about the campus optic solution, you can go to e.huawei.com or contact your local Huawei representative. If you have any questions or feedback, please post in the comments section. Thank you for joining us.